over the application packet in TMAC. Um, he will be sharing his screen and walking through what that application process looks like. If you have any questions, please put those in the chat box and send to all panelists. Um, I will not be monitoring the Q&A, so if you do see that, please don't use it because we're only monitoring the chat. So if you have questions, put those in the chat box and send to all panelists. Um, Mike? Hey, thank you, Miranda. Uh, I just want to make sure you can hear me okay. I can hear you. Okay, good. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mike Bishop. I'm the regional school nutrition consultant uh, in the greater Memphis metro area in Shelby County. And um, today we're going to talk about the SFA application packet in TMAC. Um, so, and I've got my screen shared there. There's not much of a PowerPoint presentation today, which I think is might be a good thing. Uh, we'll see. But um, we do have uh, some parts of this that we want to show and we want to share with you um, the Tennessee Department of Education's Best for All Strategic Plan, uh, where we will set all students on a path to success. Um, our school nutrition programs is in, in under district operations and TDOE, along with uh, our uh, safety and security and transportation and uh, we kind of live in this student readiness uh, section of the best for all strategic plan where Tennessee public schools will be equipped to serve the academic and non academic needs of all students in their career pathways. Uh, our mission statement with school nutrition in Tennessee is to develop extraordinary school nutrition professionals and provide strategies to increase consumption of healthy school meals. And then you can see our objectives for today. Um, so, again, we're going to work in the SFA application packet in TMAC. And we've had some uh, technical difficulties in TMAC uh, with trying to present this training. So, if you'll bear with me, um, I am going to attempt to show this from the perspective of you, the SFAs. Uh, but I may have to kind of jump back and forth from logging in as one uh, or another just to get to show you the full functionality of everything. So uh, if you'll bear with me with that. And um, we've had some uh, just kind of on the, you know, the, the, the subject of opening up this application for this current school year, we're still working through some technical things with TMAC to get that available to you. So it's not available yet, um, but we're working on that. Also uh, along those lines, we want you to hang on to your um, agreement to administer school nutrition programs, otherwise known as your program agreements and your local ag forms. Uh, just go ahead and hang on to those. Um, once the, the packet is open, then we'll be able to get those uploaded into the SFA application packet at that time. So I know it's tempting to just try to get that off, out, off your desk and get it to your consultant or the state director or what have you, but we do want you to hold on to those for now. Um, you know, if you've already put those through for signature for your superintendent and your school board, that's great. Uh, you're ahead of the game and you'll be ready to upload those when the time comes. So uh, this is the, the F SFA application packet and uh, you can see the, I mean, the link to that in TMAC. So you can see that there in TMAC. Um, really a great way to find it if you, I'm sure you already know it, but uh, it's in our SP Resources website as well. Um, as soon as you log on to that, you'll find it. And uh, then if all else fails, you can Google Tennessee Meals Accounting and Claiming. It should be the first uh, hit that pulls up there. Um, now, once you log in, you'll see from your end, you should see um, something like uh, something like this, or you should be able to go ahead and click on applications by the house top, and then you'll see this short little list um, of applications that you can select from. And so there's definitely an order of operations with the, the SFA application packet. And the number one uh, 
thing that you're going to do in that order of operations is the community eligibility provision site list or the CEP site list. And you see that here on the slide is number one. And the second thing is that you'll go into the application packet, enroll in the new school year, and then work in the application packet that way. Okay, so we do have this step number one that's outside of the application packet, but data that you enter into that, if you're going to operate the community eligibility provision in any way this year, you'll do that. Um, if not, your first step, if you're non-CEP, will just to be to go to the application packet. Okay, and I'll try to kind of make sure that we um, that we distinguish between the two as we go through this. Um, let's see. Okay, there's my contact information, which I'll show again. So now I'm going to scroll back and forth. You'll see me kind of scroll back and forth between maybe between the PowerPoint and this screen uh, in my browser. Um, but I am logged on here as Trista Snyder from Weekly County. I know I don't sound or look anything like Trista, um, but that's that's who I am today in the SFA application packet. And this is a test site for TMAC. So anything that I do in here has absolutely no effect whatsoever on the actual site that you're going to work in. It doesn't change a thing. It's a test site. It's a test environment kind of mirroring what you see on your end, but not affecting it in any way. So just want to go ahead and throw that out there. So you, re you can be rest assured that we're not going to, uh, we're not going to change anything on your end. Okay, so, um, so we're going to do this from the, the for for the CEP schools. Okay, we're going to go from that direction first because CEP schools, if you're going to operate community eligibility provision, the first thing you need to do um, is click on this community eligibility eligibility provision link. All right, so hang on now, bear with me, because if I'm logged in as Trista, that's the one thing that I can't show you how to do in real time. But if I log, I'm going to log in or log out and log back in, and I'll be able to show you how to do that. And then we'll, we may have to kind of go back and forth and, and work that way. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and do this. Okay. Now, this is going to look a little bit different from what it would look at, like on your end, so bear with me there, okay? And I'm going to have to search for weekly. Okay. All right, now, I clicked on applications. Your list is a little shorter than, than what you're going to see here on my end. That's okay. You still have this community eligibility provision link that you'll click on. And you're going to click add under the action column here. Okay. And we're going to add our data, our identified student percentage or identified student data. When it says school year in this column, that's, that's the, the year from which you're pulling data. So this year, this past year, it actually, <clears throat> under normal circumstances, uh, the CEP guidance says we have to pull that data from uh, as of April 1st. Um, but we're going to, USDA is letting you pull that data anywhere from July 1st to the last operating day of April. And uh, so July 1st of 2021 through the last operating day of April 2022. Now, when you pull data and make sure that you're pulling your attendance or enrollment and your DC students or your identified students from the same day. Uh, so. What you're going to do here, though, and and don't pay much attention to the reporting date, the open date or the closed date at this time. You have until last day of August to elect CEP. Um, that is to check the box and you're going to do CEP in your application packet. And so um, just want to make sure that you understand that you still have some time to do that. We're going to add right here under action. Okay, and then we have the list uh, of all the schools that we would have for um, Weekly County, all right? That's by adding. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit my, my cancel. 
Now I'm going to pull some numbers from uh, last year's just so we have some uh, a baseline for what we're going to put in here. Okay. And I believe uh, that she's only operating a few that were eligible, right? So we're going to do um, Dresden Elementary and uh, we'll do Dresden Middle School. And we'll do one more. We'll do Sharon School. Okay. And we'll do, put these numbers in here. Dresden Elementary had 201, 4, and 205. And let's see, their enrollment was 443. Because we're going to go ahead and enter those numbers in there. And then Dresden Middle. And their enrollment was 318. And then Sharon School. And their enrollment is 165. Okay. All right. So I'm just going back out of this. And we're going to do add. Okay. So. When I'm, I'm not going to put them all in there. Now, what you would want to do, if you're a mixed district like this, go ahead and put all of your um, number of identified students and your enrollment numbers into this community eligibility provision site list. If you're uh, a just primarily a CEP district, only CEP, then, of course, it would be the data for all of your schools. Okay. Um, now, we can use attendance. I know you see enrollment under the enrollment column here. You are allowed to use attendance instead of enrollment. It's usually to your advantage to do that. And the reason being is the USDA defines enrollment as enrolled and attending. That's that's a quote from their um, definition. So enrollment means enrolled and attending. So you can use attendance there in the enrollment. SNAP are all of those students that you uh, found on the D on the direct certification list from the Department of Human Services that are receiving SNAP benefits. OK, the other <clears throat> column. Those are direct certified students. That are either foster. Homeless or runaway. Or they're receiving TANF benefits. Uh, and so you can see whether they're receiving SNAP or TANF benefits on the DC list. Um, the last column on the DC list gives you a Y and an N or an N and a Y in that order. Y N is SNAP. And uh, if you reverse that to NY, <clears throat> that would be TANF. So TANF goes under the other column along with foster, homeless, uh, migrant or runaway, but we usually don't have migrant. Uh, students in Tennessee. Okay, so that's what what you'll put in there. And so, from the case of Dresden Elementary School, um, we had two. I'm just going to use last year's numbers. So we had 201 SNAP. Uh, for the other, we had four, four, and then it'll total that up for a total of a number of identified students of 205. And uh, the enrollment or attendance that was used here was 443. And then you can see that it'll calculate your your ISP and tell you whether you're eligible or potentially eligible. OK. And so for Dresden Middle, we had uh, 136 SNAP. And uh, one other <clears throat> and that totals us uh, gives us a total of 137. And then the enrollment here, we had 137. OK. And then we're going to go on down to Sharon School, and those are the only ones we're going to do uh, today. So we had 88. Uh, let's see. Well, I had a total of 290. We're just going to do that. So, and then the enrollment here, we had 165. 
Oh yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. Let's see. If we had 165 there, I'm just gonna go ahead and do 100 here. It gives us a 60.61% ISP, so. Um, and that's okay, we can use uh, numbers that we're just making up here. All right, and I'm gonna save that. And I have some warnings. Let's see what their warnings are. Okay, number of identified students in enrollment must be completed for all sites. So, and that's okay. It's not gonna, it shouldn't affect anything else that we do. And it will allow you to say with warnings. It will not allow you to say with errors. Okay, so we've got that done. Um, our next step is from there, if we're if we're community eligibility provision, we now we've done our first step, the CEP site list. Let me uh, address though, if you are adding new sites for CEP and you don't see them in that list, um, you can still uh, you can still do that. Now you have you're you're going to have some sites that you want to add in there. Um, you can. If these are brand new schools, they've never operated before, you have the ability to add a site in the site application. And then once you've added that in there, you have the ability to um, add your identified student information in the site application for any brand new sites. Okay, so don't worry if you don't see, if you have brand new sites, I have SFAs in my region that um, they do add brand new sites sometimes a new school will open or whatever and, and we can get that added or you can actually do that on your end in the site application and you'll be able to see that here in a minute. So this next step is for everybody. Once our CEP schools have done the CEP, uh, you know, the application packet, then um, I'm going to go ahead and log out and log back in so we can, I can change back to Trista again. All right, so. Okay. We go to applications. Now, first, I want to see if this enrollment, yep, you can see now that for this line right here, you can see that we've submitted the information. I can go to view. You can see the warning up there. You can see where I added the data. Okay. Um, just a, a note on eligibility for CEP, the minimum identified student percentage to qualify is 40%. And uh, so it'll do that math for you here. Um, I'm gonna go back and then we'll go to applications. So this next step, this is for everybody whether you're doing CEP or not, or if you're doing provision two, this will be, this next step is the first step for our provision two schools and for our non-CEP. And it's the second step for our CEP schools. We're gonna click on application packet. And you can see here, there's a, a list of application packets going back a couple of years. Um, and you can see now for school year 22, 23, it says not started, you'll want to enroll. We'll click enroll and OK. And I think it's it's thinking. Yep, it's thinking. OK. So now this is your application packet dashboard. All right, this is the SFA application packet dashboard for school year 22-23. Now, um, I did see there's, you know, when you go and if you're trying to do this with me, you're not going to see school year 22, 23 right now. I can see it in the test environment, but you won't be able to see it until that school year 22, 23 packet is. Yeah, you're welcome, Haley. <laughs> I appreciate the comment, too. Um, you won't be able to see it if you're trying to do a little along with me. I wish we could have done it that way. I know if you're like me, I'd love to follow along and just get this knocked out, but um, you'll have to wait. Be patient with us until that's released. Um, so, okay, we're in this test environment application packet for this school year. And the next thing you're going to want to do is the SFA application, right? Um, 
So we want to do that and we'll click modify. And you'll have some uh, data entry boxes here for the street address and mailing address, your director of school, so on and so forth. So just check through that and make sure that all your phone numbers, your email addresses, all those things are, are what you need them to be. Okay. And down here in A24, 25, and 26, these hearing, reviewing, verifying officials, uh, all we need here is a job title. In A27 is where you're going to do your CEP election. And you'll say, yes, we're going to do CEP, or no, we're not. Um, A28 and A29 have to, be, have, have to do with your... Um, eligibility effective dates. A28 is for free and reduced meal household applications. If you're a CEP district, go ahead and answer this as if you were doing free and reduced uh, meal household applications because if you don't make a selection, it won't allow you to save the form. Okay. And then A29 is your effective date for direct certified students. Um, now, you see here, it's either the date the SFA processed the list or the effective date on the list. You can choose those there. Uh, I'm not going to get into it on this training. There are, you might want to talk to your consultant. There may be benefits to you selecting one date or the other, but um, you'll want to make a selection there. And then uh, A30 has to do with your... Uh, if you're using an electronic uh, system to do your application approvals, okay, we want to know what that is. A31 is for our, our CCIs, residential child care institutions uh, only, like Alvin York and uh, youth villages and youth town, etc. If you're going to operate a food with a food service management company, okay, uh, go ahead and, and complete. Uh, this section, section A32 through 36. Um, now, this does not include some of our private schools that have a memorandum of understanding with a public school district to provide meals. Okay, this is only for food service management company. If you have a contract that has been approved and vetted by the state agency to operate with a food service management company. Uh, A37. Now, if you have an MOU, uh, like if you're a private school, maybe you have an MOU with Shelby County Schools to provide meals, you're gonna go ahead and, and uh, make your selection here in A37. And here, you can say, you could say yes here, and then, and then you must have an agreement. You would say yes to that, okay? And then go ahead and complete uh, 38, 39, and 40 um, for whatever's happening in your school district. Um, now, severe need lunch. There's no no such thing as severe need lunch. Actually, this has to do with our the reimbursement rate for um, it's called a two cent differential. Two cent differential, which means that if you are if you serve 60 percent or more or I should say the 60% or more of the lunches that you served two years prior were free or reduced, you qualify for the additional two cents, okay? So you, you probably noticed on the reimbursement rate chart where it says, um, you know, less than 60% or uh, more than 60% plus the eight cent. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. And any comments you want to add in A41, there's a text entry box for, for you to do that. Uh, the other thing we want you to, to know, definitely check that certification box, all right? Make sure you check the certification box, all right? So, now that I've done all of this, and I've said, yes, I'm a CEP school so, or, or district, so I'm saying, yes, that's my CEP election. And uh, remember that you've got to check that, you know, no later than August 30th, um, uh, you've got to make that CEP selection on there. So, um, and then you'll save that. That's your CEP selection. And you can see down here, there's a timestamp, okay? 
once you see you save that that's time stamped of when you've made your CEP election. So I, I certified and I'm going to save the form. Now I've got some warnings. Let's see what those are. Mm, okay. If the question for your reduced price meal household application eligibility effective date is based on is answered. It's in, oh, okay. So they encourage you to answer in the same way. Like I said, that's a warning. It'll process this form even with the warning. And there could be reasons why you don't want those to be the same. Okay. So, um, you know, the DC list is published a month late. Um, and so you may want that to line up there. There are just, there are various reasons. And I know, um, so, uh, just want to let you know that it, it might give you that warning, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and save the form. And we're going to finish and, and Margaret, I saw uh, something pop up, but I wasn't able to catch what that was immediately. Um, but I, we will address it. We'll address it at the end. Thank you. So you got that SFA application. Now you might be tempted to just go down the list here. Uh, if you're a CEP school though, or CEP district, I don't want you to go. I don't want you to, to do the, the CEP schedule next. Okay. The next thing we're going to do are the site applications. So I'm going to go down here to school nutrition program under site applications. And the ones we chose to do today, um, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to try to just do one, but I'm going to start here with Dresden Elementary. Okay. Now you'll want to make your uh, program selections so you can modify that. Let me go back and show that again. So let me actually, let me show you something else. This is your site list. Okay. So you scroll down here and this is the SNP site list, not the SSO. We're doing SNP applications this year. Um, because we have to operate the school nutrition programs, national school lunch, school breakfast, uh, once school starts. Uh, so you have to transition away from SSO and into school nutrition programs um, while, uh, on the first day of school. Uh, so it is going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> but if you look here at the bottom of this, let me let me go back and show this operation one more time. Now here you're looking at the application packet dashboard. If I click on school nutrition program underneath site applications, it'll take me to my application packet SNP site list. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here maybe you you're going to have a new school this year. You can add a site application right here and add a new site. That site number and site name needs to match whatever the Tennessee Department of Education's school directory has on file for that site number and site name. All right, that's very important. But you can do that, you can add that in and um, and save it and that would be a new site in your uh in your sfa if you're cep and you're adding a new site that new site's site application is where you're going to add your snap tana foster homeless runaway numbers your dc numbers or identified student numbers and your attendance or enrollment It'll uh, give you an option to actually type those in. So let's look at modify for Dresden Elementary School. Now you can see here for Dresden Elementary, we only have 
the after school snack program. Again, we're in a test environment. I believe in Weekly County's actual application packets, their, you know, National School Lunch School Breakfast Program. Um, actually, you know what? I know why because um, they would have operated seamless summer option last year and would have claimed meals under seamless summer option, but would have claimed their after school snacks on this application under the school nutrition program. So that's why we see that's the only one that's checked. Well, we can change that, okay? Because um, we're gonna operate the national school lunch and school breakfast program, which you have to operate to be eligible for CEP. So I've made those selections, modified that, and let's save and continue. Now this form also gives you the um, ability to update or input the street address. If it's a brand new uh, site and you're adding a site, all this will be will be blank. Okay. Um, so, and then you can add that in your street address and and participant. Uh, information here and number five that's about your severe need breakfast now severe needs determined this year based on uh 1920 data so uh that is what should populate here okay automatically it's one of those things we're trying to work out so that tmac will populate that data for you um and then and then it'll tell you whether you qualify for severe need breakfast, which is a slightly higher re reimbursement rate than the regular re breakfast reimbursement. Um, that's based on normally it's based on um, whether or not you 40 percent or more of the lunches you serve two years prior uh, were free or, redu free or reduced. And. Of course. We have to use 1920 data. USDA is going to let us do that to make that determination. So we've got to make TMAC put that in there automatically for you. Now, number six, you're going to uh, select the grades that are participating here. Um, and then let's see, you have your kitchen type, and that's a drop down menu. So this one is on site prep. We're cooking meals on site. Um, there are, you know, there used to be a central kitchen in Shelby County. Um, and then sometimes I'll see a bulk satellite in some of our schools here. Um, sometimes when Shelby County serves one of my private schools through an MOU, um, they'll prep at a, a Shelby County school and, and then that'll be um, satellite transported over in bulk. Uh, put in a, a hot serving line or what have you, and then served at the other site. So anyway, you have different various, you know, uh, methods here. If you're if you're doing a food service management company, even if they are doing on-site prep, uh, go ahead and, and do the food service management company selection here. Okay. So number eight is our pricing information. Well, uh, we're, we're weekly county, so all of our schools, are, all of our sites are non-pricing. Right? We're not charging any students for meals at all. Um, so you do have some uh, choices here. You'll have a drop down for each one of these, national school lunch, school breakfast, snack. If you are not CEP, then you're a pricing program, all right? If you are CEP, you're going to select non-pricing CEP. If you are doing provision two, you're going to pr select non-pricing provision two. Those should be the only three uh, options that we're doing here. All right. So since we're CEP, we're going to select non-pricing CEP. And then I do have to enter an adult price. Okay. I have to enter an adult price. Now you might be charging uh, for, um, you may be charging a la carte for your adult meals, which you could do, uh, usually done at breakfast, but otherwise you're gonna have to put an adult price in here. Now, adult meal pricing has its own regulations on how to do that. Um, and you can talk to your consultant if you're unsure about how to price your adult meals. So, but you have to put an adult price in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put one. This is not a real adult price. 
but just so you know that there's one in here so it doesn't kick us out with a warning or a or an error uh on school breakfast we're going to choose non-pricing cep ah i don't know if you noticed what happened here right but once i chose non-pricing cep it it opened up this community eligibility provision section right here. Okay. That's important because that data, once you choose non-pricing CEP in this site application and save it, it's going to populate that in the community eligibility provision schedule in the CEP schedule back on your SFA application packet dashboard. All right. So that's how that data kind of flows in there. If you are a brand new site, it would actually have a data entry box right here for number of identified students right here for enrollment and then it would give you based on what you put there it'd give you an identified student student percentage and then it would flow that push that into the cep schedule um, but since we already put that in we were able to do that in the cep site list um, it pulled it out of there put it in here and now it's going to put it somewhere else so just wanted to show you that too. And like if I went back here and just selected nothing, it'll pull it out and it vanished. We'll go back to breakfast and do non pricing CEP, and there it pulls it back in. And we're just going to do $2 for an adult price um, for school breakfast. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't know for sure, you know, but um we're going to go ahead and say they're doing the after school snack program and it's non-pricing and area eligible um and you won't have to do a pay to reduce price there even though it gives you the option to uh and then an adult price here for snacks even though you might not have an adult uh i'm going to see what if it does what it does if i just leave that blank section a let's move on down the national school lunch program and you'll see um the months of operation. Uh, I usually just do all and then I unselect June, July, and then I've got August through May selected there. Um, but you would select your months of operation. If you're year round school, then it would be all of them. And uh, we do have some of those. <clears throat> on, and on A1B, we need to know the days of the week that you're going to serve and claim. Uh, for most folks, it's Monday through Friday. If you're an RCCI, you can serve um, seven days or six days. All right, you'd go ahead and go in there and check Saturday and Sunday. Our meal service times. Now we're at lunch, right? So uh, we can't start lunch before 10 a.m. So I'm going to do, we're just going to do 11. Our end time here might be 1 p.m. Um... Will offer versus serve be implemented for all grades? Now, let's go back up here and see what grades we have. Well, we only have, we're only uh, serving through fourth grade. So in this instance, you don't have to do offer versus serve at lunch. If you were serving high school grades, you this would have to be a yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And, and we're just going to, because when when Weekly County did this particular one, it was for the after school snack program. There's no offer versus serve for snacks. So, um, but now we're doing lunch and breakfast. Now we're doing lunch. So I'm going to say yes for the offer versus serve. Just going to go ahead and do that. You wouldn't have to. And if you did say no, um, then you would have to put something. You've got to type something in this A three A, or it'll kick it out. So. You could just, if you say no, and you could just say none. Um, our menu planning method, we only have one choice. <clears throat> our school nutrition programs are based on the traditional food-based menu planning. So we're, that's what we're going to choose. And then our counting methods. Uh, now, uh, for our community eligibility provision schools, you don't have to use a, a computer point of sale. You don't have to tie an eligibility free or, or reduced or paid to a student. You could just use a checkoff sheet. And so uh, I would, I'm going to go ahead and say in this case that, uh, you know, you, we could do other. 
and then you could type in here um, you could type in here just a, a check off sheet okay or a tally sheet uh, or we could do a computer point of, uh, point of sale and now we're going to kind of repeat some of the things that we did for lunch for breakfast um, I'm going to go ahead and check all and then uncheck July and June. And I'll check Monday through Friday for my breakfast times. Breakfast has to be served during the morning hours, so that's what we'll do. Depending on what time school starts at this at this school, you know, we'll say it's an eight o'clock school and maybe breakfast starts at seven. It runs for an hour. Um, now for breakfast, you don't have to do offer versus serve for any grades. It's it's uh, optional, but I still think it's a good idea. And so I'm just going to say yes. But I could say no. Again, if you say no, it asks you what grades is offer versus serve implemented, and you just need to say no and then say none right there. On your uh, menu planning method, we only have one choice: traditional food-based menu planning. And then check the breakfast models that you're serving there. You could do more than one checkbox here. Um, and so if it's, it's not really, I would uncheck universal. I wouldn't say call universal breakfast CEP. Um, but if you're doing a universal free breakfast, let's say you were uh, not a CEP school, but you were going to do universal free breakfast, you could check that. And then traditional would be in the, in the, uh, the cafeteria and then you have the options for classroom prior to the bill uh, classroom after the bill grab and go or second chance and we're just we're just capturing uh, some data here under these breakfast models to report back up to USDA and then again your counting procedure for breakfast and let, let's say uh, they're doing breakfast in the classroom everywhere at Winkley County and all their elementary schools so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do roster on this one um, because uh, they may be using a classroom roster to to count. Um, uh, but again, you could say other, you know, and do your tally sheet because it's a CEP school district where all your students are eating at no charge. So you could do a tally sheet. Now with my after school snack program, um, the months here were already checked and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to leave it as is. That's fine. It's Monday through Friday. We have to put our times in there um, and snack has to be served after the, the school day has ended, right? So you'll see here in C3, what time does the normal school day end? 2.55. So I'm going to do... And I don't know why in the world it gives you the choice of doing a.m. for snack, but it does. Uh, 3 p.m. Maybe my snack goes for an hour. It may go longer. You may have aftercare, what have you, that goes longer than that. And uh, we're not going to do non-pricing, uh, just to guess. But this is a uh, that would be attendance area eligible. And then you'll select the qualifying site for the after school care program if only if you you selected attendance area eligible where the eligibility is based on another site okay now for snacks the eligibility is that the the site where you're serving has to be um, in the attendance area of a school that is 50 percent or more free and reduced so it's not you don't have to do air, attendance area eligible based on the, that school where the snacks are served. But most of the time, I would say that's how we do it. If it's not, you would choose this and then you could select from various sites, you know, where you're actually getting that eligibility from. And you'll see here it says percent not available because we haven't completed those site applications uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. So just want to show you that, but I'm going to choose this. Attendance area eligible based on this site, Dresden Elementary School. I'm going to say, let's see what it tells us. Oh, there we go. It's been saved. So I must have done something right because it didn't give me any errors or what have you. 
Um, I'm going to go and do edit again. I want to save that again. I'm interested. Look there. No errors or warnings. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. And then finish. Now, you would go through and do that for all of your sites right here. You would complete all of those and you want a green check mark for all of your sites. Once you're done, then you can hit the back button. So those are the site applications. All right, those are the site applications. So the next step is the CEP schedule. So we're going to go ahead and add. Now you'll see there's only, we only have two schools on here that were eligible for CEP based on the data that we entered in the community eligibility provision site list. Okay. So remember, here's how that information flows. The CEP site list to the site application to the CEP schedule. And once you get in here, you could have a whole bunch of schools in here and, and you can do some grouping. Okay. You can do some grouping in here. Um, you don't have to assign them all to one group or what have you. Um, but the number of identified students in the enrollment will auto populate from the CEP site list and so on. Um, if you're a brand new SFA and you don't have identified student data, you've never operated our programs and you don't have that data. Okay. You will get with your consultant and we will establish that data after the first couple of weeks of operation in the school year. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so if you look on this, on this form, you'll see cycle year, data year, number of identified students, etc. cetera, um, on those column headers. The data year is the year from which enrollment and identified student data is collected as of April 1st or this year, anytime between July 1st, 21 and last operating day of April 22. And this is, of course, this is usually the year prior to the cycle year. The cycle year and the data year may be the same for a brand new site. Um, new sites report their enrollment and identified student data in the site application after at least two weeks of operation again. Uh, so now we can do some grouping here. The table at the top of the CEP schedule, that's the group summary. Uh, if the SFA or if you have a site that's marked as an individual group, it won't show in the summary. Okay. All right. It won't show in the summary. And then, um, so there are SFAs have to choose a group from the site's drop-down menus under the CEP and CEP schedule under grouping. Um, and grouping, just remember, grouping of sites into more than one group could result in different cycle and data years for each group as well. So, and this could also result in different free claiming percentages for each group. And that's something else you'll be able to find here, exactly what percent of the total meals that you serve will be claimed at the highest free uh, reimbursement rate and what percent will be claimed at the lowest paid reimbursement rate because there is no reduced reimbursement rate in CEP. Um, now single sites you could choose individual or you could choose group one either one. So you would go and do this and you can see right here that Dresden Elementary is actually is unassigned. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and put both of these schools in group one. All right. And I'm pretty sure there is a certification. I don't know why that's not showing up here, but there's a certification box for you to certify here before you uh, save. Um, so I just want to make sure that you do that and look for that. If it's not there, it may have been removed. Um, and TMAC is a fluid uh system <clears throat> to say the least okay so we're going to go ahead and just leave that and you'll and you can see here that based on the data that we have for these two schools um dresden elementary 74.05 percent of all the meals that they total me meals that they serve will be claimed at the free reimbursement rate the remaining 25.95 percent claimed at the paid rate 
and for share in school, 96.98% will be claimed at the free and 3.2% will be claimed at the paid. And, and we, the way we do that is we divide our number of identified students divided by our enrollment and get the identified student percentage. So, uh, and then the identified student percentage is multiplied times 1.6. That multiplier, that, that number 1.6, is established by USDA and has not changed in years and, and is not um, projected uh, to change. But that's how we get our, our claiming percentages there. Um, now, those two uh, are their individual claiming percentages. What you want really is the total, the claiming percentages for the, the total group, and you can see that at the, at the top in the summary. 80.26 free and 19.74 paid. Okay, so you can see the higher your ISP, the better chances you are getting, you know, claiming more meals at the free claiming percentage. I believe 61.2% as an ISP is like the, the magic number for 100% free claiming. Um, there is no free claiming above 100%. It caps at that. So even if your ISP was 100, 100, your free claiming percentage would still be 100%. So now don't forget to save this. We save the form. I saved it without errors. And I have green check marks. So I'm working towards those green check marks. Okay. Now let's talk about our supporting documents. This is where you're going to put your program agreement and local ag forms that I'm asking you to hold on to, but this is where you're going to put them. Um, this is also where you're going to put information for your community eligibility provision if you are starting a brand new four-year cycle or if you're starting from scratch with CEP. This is where you'll put your supporting documents. You click on details, you go and click on your SFA name, okay? Um, and then you'll click on the, uh, uh, the paper clip, <clears throat> go ahead and browse your computer and save the form. All right. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that you click the box that says documented document submitted to TDOE. All right. Document submitted to TDOE and it'll submit with today's date. Same thing with your local ag plan. You'll do the paperclip, you'll browse, you'll save it, and then document submitted to TDOE. And it may erase your document submitted to TDOE, so make sure that you go back and check those because I don't know if you noticed it pulled that out. So we want to do those. Um, actually, that's your, that's your CEP reauthorization. Here's your program agreement down at the bottom documents submitted to TDOE after you've uploaded those. Um, and if you want, you can, you can upload just the signature pages and that would be fine. Now for your CEP reauthorization documents, okay? Um, again, attendance can be used instead of enrollment. Uh, make sure you check your date on your supporting documents. Under normal circumstances, data has to be as of April 1st of the date of year. Um, or the first operating day in April if the first falls on a weekend or a school holiday. But data for this year can be from any date between July 1st, 2021 and April 30th, 2022. Um, attendance and DC data, this is important, attendance and DC data must be from the same date and all schools in the SFA must use the same date. The data must match the data uh, for each site in your CEP schedule. So you put the numbers in the CEP schedule. Now the documentation that you upload needs to support those same numbers. Um, and consultants will follow up with you if there are any discrepancies with those because we'll be comparing. Now data must be used from the benefit issuance document or the roster. Um, I know that not all SFAs use student information software or databases, so an Excel or a similar spreadsheet or a database report that is that is used by your 
school or school district to document student enrollment and contains enrollment and identified student data is ex acceptable. But letters or copies of the USDA CEP calculator or a Word document just with a statement that we have this many DC or this in this many attendance, those things would not be acceptable forms of documentation. Okay. <clears throat> Now, groups with a cycle year that coincide with the current school year, uh, meaning that school year 22-23 will be your first year of a four-year CEP cycle, you have to upload documentation to support the enrollment and number of stu identified students from the data year in the CEP schedule. So you're the ones that are uploading uh, information here. If you're starting a year one of your four-year year cycle or your brand new CEP site, you're starting CEP, you're going to upload documentation. If you have groups in your CEP schedule from a cycle year from a previous school year, meaning that this school year is going to be year two, three, or four, and that you are not start starting a four-year cycle over again, that documentation is in a previous SFA application packet, and you are not required to upload new supporting documents. Um, now that's our CEP schedule. So I'm going to, I'm going to cancel out of this. Normally I would, well, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to save it. Let's see what happens here. Okay. All right, good. And then go back and we have a green check mark here. Now, for those of you that operate with a food service management company in your SFA application packet dashboard, you'll see a separate line for food service management company contracts. That line only applies to those that have a food service management company. Um, you do not have to enter data here. The, our contract specialist will enter contracts into this section. Will not affect the approval of your um, packet. There's also a line <clears throat> for all of our districts that says meal pattern compliance dashboard. Only those SFAs that are brand new starting our programs this year have never operated national school lunch or breakfast programs with us will have to enter data in the meal pattern compliance dashboard. If you are a brand new SFA, you can consult with your regional consultant for instructions on how to upload those documents. Once you have finished everything in here, you should have a total number pending of your site applications here. And again, we're just doing the school nutrition program site applications, not SSO. So you see those pending, um, which means they all have green check marks. Everything has green check marks here on the dashboard, and it makes this submit for approval button light up. Once that is lit and active, you can click that to submit your packet for approval. Oh, that's a mouthful. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and um, I want to show you before we're done and I'll show you again. But this is my contact information. We'll go ahead and leave this up here on the screen and then I'll uh, pass it over to Randa and we'll see if we have any questions. Hey, Mike, we do have a few questions. Um, I do want to remind everyone that we are recording um, the I'm just going to ask you one that I think is really pertinent, and then we have you ask the rest, and we will follow up with the recap. Um, but it is, are we claiming meals under SSO for July through September, or do we need to have a pricing program? Well, <clears throat> SSO has to stop once the first day of school starts in your programs. So yeah. one of the reasons, there are a few why SSO was allowed to go through the end of September, one of which is uh, the last day of September is the end of the fiscal year for the seamless summer option. Okay. Um, and the other reason was to allow SSO to run until school started. Um, but it's USDA's guidance that we, uh, at the, for on the first day of school, that we transition from SSO to the National School Lunch Program school and School Breakfast Program. And then SSO will only operate under 
its uh, pre-COVID seamless summer option guidance, which means it's operated during the summer months uh, when school is not in session and if there's an emergency where schools are closed for uh, um, for 10 days or more. Okay, and then um, there was a question about the program agreement um, that it's not, you referenced like the old one being available and to be approved, but it's not currently available on our website. Um, is there anywhere that the program and ag agreement can be accessed? Those those can on that. If you if you put those are pulled down off of our website, um, there's <laughs> there's there's current litigation at the TDOE level uh, that has to do with some of the language in those and. Um, it's not really something that I can address or that really that any of your consultants can address other than we're working to get that resolved and to provide you the resources that you need, including the program agreement in the local agricultural compliance plan. And once those have been resolved uh, and we get the go ahead, then we can upload those back onto our website. Um, so I would say if you've already pulled those down, uh that you either hold on to those or wait for uh, a new program agreement and local agriculture uh, pro, uh compliance plan to be added back to the website okay all right we are over time um i do have everyone's question so we will try to get those in the recap answered to you all um, and we will follow up um, with you guys um, in a couple of days. Again, we do have this recorded and it will be sent out. So um, I hope everyone has a great day and uh, we will talk to you again soon. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a good day.